I'm Dennis Baldwin. Thank you guys for tuning in. In this video, I want to talk about this NAS32 board. It's been sitting on my desk for probably six months. And in this video, I want to walk through putting it on my mini quad. Previously, I flew it with a multi Wii, then moved to CC3D. And now I want to give the NAS32 a try. So I'm a complete newbie when it comes to this board. And what I want to try to do is capture on camera the process that I go through as a first timer, see if we can get this mini quad in the air. And if you're not familiar with this, I've actually designed it and 3D printed it. It's on Thingiverse, so check it out. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Let me just mention that the CC3D and multi Wii boards are amazing flight controllers. You see a lot of guys using them for FPV racing or very agile flight. And I've really enjoyed flying with both, learning about the configuration utilities. But I figured it was time to give the NAS32 a shot. Now, let me just mention something quickly about this. I'm going to be demonstrating the version that has the barometer and the magnetometer. You can see those right here. This is the Acro NAS32 that doesn't have the barometer or the magnetometer. So if you're doing any sort of FPV racing, a lot of guys are flying with that because they don't need the continuous stabilization. And you'll notice this doesn't have any header pins. You can order a version that already has the pins pre-soldered or solder them yourself. And I probably should have ordered the soldered version. I suck at soldering, but got these on there. And now we're going to go ahead, mount it on the mini quad and walk through the configuration process. So I've removed the multi wii and the awesome thing about it is the mounting holes are the same distance. They're 32 millimeters apart, so good to see some standards so we don't have to redesign the frame or make any modifications. You'll notice that the multi wii pins are straight up and the NAS 32s come out to the side, but you can also get a version or just put your own header pins that point straight up. The NAS 32 is now mounted. You'll notice that little arrow pointing to the front of the quad where we have the green props. Before we connect the NAS32 to our computer, we actually want to get everything wired up. So this is the front of the flight controller. We'll only be hooking up the four ESCs here. Now here's something that threw me off a little bit. These are for your receiver connections. And normally you're used to plugging one servo lead in for each connection, but in this case, it's a little different. So you have ground, power, aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder starts on the second row, and the other channels after that are auxiliary channels. And I have seen that you can actually buy a special cable that will plug in and break out to your different connections, but in this case, we're gonna use standard servo leads to get our connections set up, and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna do that. But taking a look at our FreeSky receiver, you'll see that this first connector is our aileron, second connector elevator, third throttle, fourth rudder, and this last one is an auxiliary connection that we'll use to change our flight modes. And I'm running power and ground from the aileron channel. The rest are just the signal pins for the rest of the channels. For starters, we're going to connect our ground, power, and aileron channel, and that'll be going to these first three pins. And what we'll do next, you see I have this sort of hat cable, these two servo leads. I'm going to create this cable by running each one of these leads to a specific connector on the receiver. So in this case, we have elevator and throttle. So we'll go ahead and connect that to our pins numbered two and three. And just to demonstrate the connector that went into the NAS32, it breaks out to these two connectors, one for the elevator, one for the throttle. And we've done the same here with our rudder and auxiliary channel. Those two come out to this one connector. And if you're not aware, it's super easy to do this. You just get a little set of tweezers, you pop that tab up, then you can slide the connectors out. We'll go ahead and connect that rudder and auxiliary on this bottom row. I'll go ahead and put these other channels 
back in place. I removed them just so we could get to that bottom row. Our receiver connections are now in place. For our motors, we go from one to six, right to left, with this being the front of the board. Motor one is actually this rear right motor, and that's going to spin in a clockwise direction. This is motor two, we're going counterclockwise. Motor three, counterclockwise. And then motor four is clockwise. And that's the motor layout for the Quadcopter X configuration. All of this is in the NAS32 manual. We'll go ahead and begin the software configuration. So I'll connect the board to my MacBook. If you've worked with another flight controller like MultiWii or the CC3D, you'll likely have the USB drivers that you need. But if you don't, you'll need to download them from the SI Labs website. You can see there's a download for Windows as well as a download for Mac. Now with the Silicon Labs USB drivers installed, I've connected the NAS32 to my Mac. And after you do that, you want to launch the base flight configuration software. Now this comes as a Chrome app, which is really cool. You can get it from the Chrome web store. And I've already installed it. You'll see this launch app button. But if you don't have this open and this is just a quick tip, you'll need a shortcut to be able to get to that. So you can right click in your bookmarks toolbar and then click show app shortcut. I'll click on that. You'll see the base flight configuration software right here. It'll launch and now you can see our USB connection. So let me go ahead and connect and you'll notice that it tells me to upgrade to a newer version of the firmware. So to do that, you want to disconnect. And what we'll do next is we'll click load firmware online. And you can see that this version matches what's currently listed as the most stable release. I'll click flash firmware. You'll notice the progress of the flashing going on. Now it's verifying and the firmware has been updated. So very simple process with this Chrome app. Now we can begin configuration. I'm on the setup tab and I'll click accelerometer. You can see the board in the background. So let me go ahead and click that. Make sure your board is level. It says accelerometer calibration finished. Now we'll calibrate the magnetometer where we begin the process and spin the multi-rotor on all axis 360 degrees and we have 30 seconds to do that. So I'll go ahead and click calibrate magnetometer. I'll pick up the mini quad. I'll do 360 degrees roll, then pitch. Go around the yaw axis. And we'll set it back down. And you can see that it says our calibration is finished. And just a side note, I used to do this a lot with APM and PIXOC using the cable. It's a little bit cumbersome because that cable tends to get tangled up. If you're familiar with APM or PIXOC, you can actually do this wirelessly, which makes the process a lot easier. So make sure you do that thoroughly and do your best to rotate that and not get all tangled up. Next thing I'll do is I'll go to the motor testing tab and I just wanna make sure that our motors are properly operating and spinning in the correct direction. So I'll go ahead and apply battery power. Now it's always wise to do this without your props on, but since it's a mini quad and I'm a bit lazy, I'll go ahead and leave them on. So down here you'll see a little checkbox. I'll do that and then I'll start with motor one. Spin it in the right direction. We'll do motor two. Then we'll do motor three. Our motors are operating correctly and spinning in the right direction. Now, as you can see, I'm working with the FreeSky Tyrannus. I have a good bind between my transmitter and receiver. So what I'll do now is show you my channel setup. We have aileron as channel one, elevator, throttle, rudder, and then our flight mode switch. Those map to the channels that we connected to the board with our servo leads and our flight mode, which is this channel five, I have it connected to this switch. So let's go ahead and look at the base flight configuration software to make sure our channels are operating properly. 
with the NACE32 connected, powered up, a good bind with our Tyrannus. You can see the channel monitor for the receiver, so throttle all the way up, back, then I'll go yaw left, yaw right, I'll pitch forward and back, then roll left, right. Everything looks well centered and endpoints look good. Let's go ahead and look at PID tuning. Here are the default PIDs that we're going to do a test flight with. Now, I can probably guarantee these may be a little high just because the mini quad is a lot smaller profile than what the defaults are probably set up for. But we have pitch and roll at four. You can see our integral and derivative values. And before we fly, let's just take a look at our flight modes. Now you can see a ton of supported flight modes. By default, the mini quad will fly in a rate mode, so it's sort of a acro with no stabilization. But for angle mode, I'll go ahead and set that at medium. With that value set, I'll go ahead and click save in the bottom right. And when I toggle the switch, you can see that angle mode goes to green, which means we're on and that's off, which will be our rate mode. So let's go ahead and give this a test. I'm going to arm. You'll notice that when I arm, it spins up the motors. You can actually change that. I'll show you how to do that. So right now we're in rate mode. Let's see what it does. Not bad for the default. You see a little bit of oscillation. But we'll work on the PIDs to address that. So now let me go ahead and switch into angle mode. Flip that switch. Now you can see the mini quad doing self-leveling. Now we'll go back to rate. And you'll notice that stabilization is gone. I've connected the NAS32 back to the computer. We'll click connect. We'll go over to our PID tuning. I'm cheating here a little bit because I've experimented with the roll and pitch P values. And I found 2.1 to work fine. We'll leave the integral and derivative alone for now. I'll go ahead and click save to write those to the board. Now, as I just demonstrated, when you arm the NAS32 by default, it'll spin up the motors and I actually like to not have them spin up, so I'm going to reduce this min throttle value to 1000. Then I'll go ahead and save. Now let's give this a test. So with our P gain adjusted and our throttle minimum at 1000, I'm now armed with no spinning motors. I'll just bring them up a little bit and we'll take off in rate mode. See, there's practically no oscillation anymore. Let me switch to angle mode. This thing handles really well. So that was my first go with the Nays 32. Hope you guys learned something I definitely did today. Just a few final thoughts. Really like the base flight configuration software, made things super easy. It's a Chrome app, you can install it and then get up and running quickly. The only thing that I think is a little bit confusing with this is the receiver connections, which I talked about. You can order that special cable or you can create your own. So make sure you pay attention to that. The other thing is that I was reading in the manual that for your ESC leads, you wanna make sure that you get your polarity set right. So ground is always on the outside of the board. It says in the manual that if you connect them improperly, you could fry your board. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I definitely don't wanna find out. We walked through installing, wiring everything, configuring it, got this thing up in the air in about an hour. I'll definitely continue keeping you guys updated. I'll do some more experimentation with this board. If you guys have any questions or comments, please let us know. And until next time, thanks for watching.